CitizenCon 2023, that is Star Citizen's biggest event of the year, is now over and it was an earth shattering experience. Server meshing, the never before done holy grail gaming tech, was demonstrated live and working at the event. Squadron 42 Star Citizen single player game is now feature complete in the final polish phase and it looks stunning. Pyro, the new system in Star Citizen, was playable at the convention and it's releasing at the end of this month in a test server environment. The star map user interface was shown off and it does not disappoint. New ships were introduced, massive improvements to the engine graphics were shown off, space cows and space whales made an appearance. This event may represent one of the most important momentum shifts that we've seen for the game since its Kickstarter back in 2000. 2012. You do not want to miss this summary. Now I'm going to do my best to wrap up what is essentially 12-ish hours of presentations and demonstrations into a bite-sized package for you guys to digest. But if you want to watch the full two-day presentation or maybe skip to some of those sections in the presentation, check out my two live streams that I did with Salty Mike for the entire event link below and don't forget to subscribe and leave a like if you enjoy this content. Now normally I would struggle to find a good place to start off with this much amazing content that was shown, but honestly server meshing was the most meaningful tech displayed so far. This is the god tech, the holy grail of game scaling, the key to Star Citizen success and up until this point it was only ever theorized to be possible. CIG has crossed the threat. Threshold. Paul Rindell took to the stage to demonstrate this technology in a very comprehensive way, showing a single environment being broken up into three different server zones with seamless transitioning between the servers and even shooting, driving, and throwing objects between the servers without any noticeable lag or transitionary boundary. It's simply unbelievable tech and I have no idea how they did it. Most games that need multiple servers to host a large number of players mask the server transitions with clever loading or just have large loading sequences while you and your entities are migrated from one server to another. Star Citizen has somehow managed to do this instantly and seamlessly and it'll allow them to scale their universe to any size that they want without ever having to hit a loading mode overload servers or break the immersion. It's revolutionary tech that could empower hundreds of games and frankly the entire game industry should be taking notice right now. They also demoed replication layer tech working to save server state and transfer it when a server crashes so that players no longer disconnect from the game but instead just transfer to a new server. How all of this works is frankly beyond me and probably most people for that matter but even Chris took to the stage afterward and said that he cried when he saw server meshing working for the first time. And even Salty Mike who was co-streaming the event with me shed a tear as well. This is the most meaningful piece of tech that Star Citizen has needed and it's finally working in a test environment and we will be seeing the first public testing of at least the replication layer and server crash recovery coming soon. A dev even joined in the chat to our stream to confirm that this tech is scaling right now at least on their internal testing which is very exciting. And honestly, I just got emotional recording that bit again. It's 11 years of progress leading up to this moment and it's truly invigorating to see it in action. Now, speaking of getting emotional, when Chris took to the stage to close out the show on the second day with a 25 minute long hold the line trailer for Squadron 42, the feels got real as we saw a man who has been working toward this goal for 11 years now, able to finally show the fruits of that labor and it was a truly special moment. Squadron 42 is now feature complete and in the polish phase of development, and honestly, it looks fantastic. The visuals, world crafting, writing, acting talent, level design, and dare I say gameplay looked 
great. For anyone who thought Squadron 42 wasn't going to deliver in the visual department, well, this trailer will set them straight. And it shows a different side of the occasionally goofy multiplayer verse of Star Citizen. Squadron 42 is anything but that. A serious story of sacrifice and military service. So in 40 years from now, when you're surrounded by everything and everyone you hold dear, and they ask, what did you do in the Battle of Vega? You can look them in the eye and say, I heard the line. It gives me major Battlestar Galactica vibes and I couldn't be happier. Now Chris Roberts didn't pull a Chris this time. No release date was given, just that the game is getting close, but I think many assume that that means we're going to be getting this sometime next year. Now the environmental art shown off in Squadron 42 is truly breathtaking. From the massive fleets of ships flying through space to the nebulous lightning clouds that make up the coil, the cities and sewers, the game holds its own and even surpasses most AAA titles on the market right now. There's honestly so much more detail that I could discuss with this trailer alone, but we do have about 12 hours of content to cover, so let's keep moving. Now, while server meshing might technically be the most important tech leap that was shown, holy heck, the visual upgrades to the Star Engine are stunning. Star Citizen is definitely one of the best looking games right now, but the visual upgrades that were shown will push it to a level most people have never seen. Firstly, the new cloud and fog tech is getting pushed to an epic level. The ground fog that follows the terrain of these massive planets adds a new level of realism. The light rays that form around the natural volumetric clouds is also incredible. Global illumination and shadows on small foliage adds massively to the realism of each render. New interactive water was shown off that renders more realistically but also gets kicked up from ship engines flying overhead and splashes when debris lands into the water. RTX and better global illumination lighting shows a massive improvement in overall lighting and DLSS, FSR, and a proprietary CIG version of dynamic resolution scaling promised to bring massive performance gains as well. Also, surprisingly, unannounced, dynamic destruction was shown off. Ships crashing into buildings and taking down walls, infantry firefights chipping away at concrete cover, and new super detailed flowcharts for ship destruction allowing their components to fail realistically as parts of the ship are damaged or lost. This is crazy impressive tech that I did not expect to see come to an MMO. New cloth simulation and hair simulation was also shown off. Those items were actually really impressive with some of the most realistic character hair that I've seen in a video game. Ship fire propagation and realistic firefighting was also shown. It looks much improved from the first demonstration shown during an ISC earlier this year. We also got to see space cow things on Microtech and the storm walls finally in the atmosphere of the gas giant crusader. Very exciting for me. I'd really like to become some sort of space game hunter or something like that. It just seems like a really cool profession or option that you could do in this game. But also just seeing the wildlife on planets does so much to bring these worlds to life. Realistic spaceship audio was also demoed, which got some people very excited. So if you were ever wondering if they took the whole no sound in space thing seriously, what the game might sound like in a dogfight, it's actually pretty know, cool. We'll Dude, that's awesome. The audio for the game's weapons and environments seem to be making massive strides, some of which we've seen in the recent patches and some of which will be coming in future patches. Now, player base building on these massive planets was also shown off, or at least it was shown off in a more concept phase with impressive detail. Habitation, farming, mining, medical, and more types of structures were shown to connect together on the surface of Microtech. There'll be several new base building machines for these smaller structures. Apparently the RSI Galaxy will have some sort of base building module for it. And then of course the massive Pioneer construction ship will be able to build the massive scale facilities. Now, in terms of how all of this is gonna work in the universe, if you're in a high security system with lots of, say, UEE protection, you will be offered full protection for your player-built base so that it can't be destroyed by other players, ever. But the cost 
will be high. There's going to be high taxes and high operational fees. So the financial return will likely be a lot lower in high security systems. Low security systems will offer partial protection with the local MPC security showing up to defend your base if it comes under attack, but it's not a guarantee that they will be able to truly defend it. Plus, there will still be taxes and fees in these systems, but likely a lot less than a high sec system. And when you build a base in a zero security system, it will not require the initial land claim, which requires money to make that purchase. So you can basically build anywhere and you're not gonna have taxes or fees, but you won't have any sort of NPCs showing up to protect your base if it comes under attack. So you're gonna need to build lots of automated defenses and probably have an org around to try and back up your base if it comes under attack. Now the building process itself will allow you to designate the layout of your structures before having to build them and then you can supply the resources to the appropriate construction machinery which will then construct the buildings. The idea is to not have bases be fully autonomous but instead require regular maintenance, resupplies and moving and or selling of the output cargo. Now while base building seems like it's already in development, apparently it's actually going to start development in the first quarter of next year and Chris said that he would like to see it actually in game by the end of 2024 but many people find that prediction to be highly unlikely. Crafting was also lightly discussed since it's kind of intertwined with base building and they basically confirmed that it's going to be a major feature in the works allowing you to craft your own weapons, gear, and even entire spaceships. Now the star map was the next big ticket item and it looks very far along with its design. Any fan of Star Citizen knows that the current map is one of the most problematic features in the game and in most need of an overhaul. And this new map system that was demonstrated is truly remarkable. On the surface, it looks like any other map that you might use in a video game. But when you realize that it can map anything in the entire verse, including massive procedurally generated planets, cities, space station interiors, spaceship interiors, set waypoints, save coordinates, give those coordinates or sell those coordinates to other players, and give you navigational routes, it becomes a different beast entirely. I can see why this tech took so long to develop. It can zoom into the smallest point of interest and look around at different shops in your immediate vicinity, or zoom all the way out to see every single planet in the solar system. It's pretty darn impressive. Some higher level functionality like say trading routes or filters related to your specific profession are not yet integrated to the map, but it is a hell of a start. Now ship maintenance and engineering gameplay was demonstrated again. Many players are excited about this because it really empowers multi-crew gameplay. The engineering UI, which you could access from a terminal in your ship, seems to use a version of the same star map UI, and it allows players to control ship components, it issue repair orders to specific areas of the ship, and balance power, sometimes with even battery backup systems as needed. It makes the power relays and interconnected systems make a lot more sense, and it shows players trying to repair a damaged quantum drive. It now appears that the quantum drives can start to take damage quite easily once the shields go down, which could give attackers more opportunities to shut down ships trying to escape, and defenders are going to need more engineers and repair crew to maintain components, especially in combat or risk losing their ships. The whole system looks very impressive and it's going to become playable soon in the Arena Commander as sort of a test environment. Now, FPS gameplay and upgrades were also shown and they looked very impressive. New player movement and animations look solid and clean. They allow for sliding, mantling, grabbing ladders in very natural ways, new takedown abilities that can also be ranked up for faster and quieter takedowns, really good prone animations while looking around and crawling, more examples of EVA movement, which looks fantastic, and quick first person looting. Star Citizen is stepping up the FPS game in major ways and it looks extremely good. There's a new heads up display on your visor with all kinds of new functionality and they replace the old inner thought interaction system 
with something just way more intuitive and frankly simple. There's a new ping system that looks extremely robust, allowing you to ping enemies, even seeing their skeletons and stuff like that around cover, but there's some caveats to using the system, like giving away your own position. Plus there's now animations for pushing like all the buttons in the game, which includes panels, turning valves, interacting in your ship cockpit, and pretty much interacting with everything. It's crazy. Grabbing ammo and rearming from the backpack is now simple and automatic. You can rearm magazines that are in your backpack. It just takes a little bit longer than if they were indexed on you. The star map functions as a mini map for your FPS HUD now. There's cool new picture in picture scope rendering and refined weapon recoil and sound effects. Honestly, there's even more to talk about here like binding hands and legs for enemies if you want to take them down but not kill them. But I'm just covering the things that really stood out to me. So there's more detail there if you really want to get into it. It was an impressive panel to say the least. Now when it comes to ship flight, the new ship UI was probably the most impressive to me. They showed both updated multifunctional displays on the dashboard and helmet visor displays that save settings and preferences for individual ships. This is huge. You can put the most important information to you up on your visor. You can put secondary information down on your MFDs. It just gives you a whole lot of freedom and functionality. Player animations now press all the buttons in the cockpit that activate the functions like engines on or off or opening and closing the canopies. It just looks really cool and way more immersive. There's now more visual effects that have been added to better communicate ship trajectory and speed without having to rely on your instruments quite as much. A new quantum jump mechanic forces pilots to steer the ship on course at the beginning of a quantum jump to lock in your quantum bubble, which is honestly really cool. It means that you need a little bit more hands-on time with the ship and different quantum drives apparently will require different degrees of finesse to actually get you into your quantum state. Ships now have a much needed zoom in ability for highly accurate shooting at distances, which can also paint specific parts of enemy ships for precise gimbaled aiming. It was demonstrated for disabling a hammerhead's turrets in combat from a distance and it looks, it just looks awesome. I'm really excited to see this next phase of fighter versus big ship combat where you can really start to target components better and strategize how you wanna take on a larger ship. Realistic flight was also demonstrated for ships that have wings or control surfaces, whatever you want to call them. The Gladius was able to turn off all of its space thrusters when in atmosphere and just use the rear engines for thrust to save a lot of hydrogen fuel or even glide in atmosphere and stall out. This looked really cool and I want to know a lot more about the functionality of the system, though it may be a ways off considering that they're going to need to tweak this system for all the ships in the game. Now character customization was shown off alongside more clothing customization options and it was all very impressive. Normally I don't care that much about character creation but the UI used here to manipulate your character's face was really impressive and super intuitive compared to a lot of other character creation that I've seen. I think people will actually be able to manipulate the characters in game to look however they want or even like themselves with uh, out having to sort through billions of menus like other systems do. The new hair tech was also quite impressive. It showed tons of customization options and new physics simulations. It, it looked very, very real, possibly some of the most realistic looking hair I've seen in a game. Now, of course, Pyro was shown off. The Pyro Outpost, Space Stations, and new massive distribution center locations were shown off as well. People at the event were actually playing Pyro on the show floor and many clips of them playing were have been shown online. It wasn't being leaked. They were essentially allowed to film with their phones. This pyro system is going to come to a test server at the end of the month. It's not going to be for everyone. It's going to go on a wave based system depending on concierge level and other factors. I'm not really sure entirely, but you may get an invite at the end of the month to join the pyro test server, which sounds very exciting. And what we've seen from the presentations, pyro's environment is stunning. Ruin station and the rest of the stations around the verse look awesome with tons 
of really thick gas clouds and orange lighting to set the mood entirely different from Stanton. There's secret passageways in the space stations, there's abandoned space stations where you can run dangerous missions, and the planet side outposts look fantastic and provide a huge variety of mission based activities. Your faction rating is also going to play a big role here, granting you free passage on some stations while potentially forcing you to sneak on to others. Players testing out Pyro on the floor reported that there are new solar flares in the system that have to be avoided or they can knock out your ship while in flight, which would be really bad if you're in atmosphere and you get knocked out and go crashing into the surface. Pretty cool and it looks very different overall from Stanton. Now the massive production facilities, previously labeled as underground facilities, have progressed a lot since we saw them last. These areas will serve as both mission drop-off spots for basic stuff, but also hotspots for player raids. This would be a group of players doing a combat landing, infiltrating the facilities, stealing lots of valuable goods on carts, getting out again with those goods, and then other players may actually be alerted to these robberies in progress, and then they can come down and try and fight these players. So there's going to be both PvE and PvP combat in a raid. The facilities look amazing and represent major gameplay locations for Star Citizen's future content. I can't wait for them. Persistent hangars and cargo elevators were finally demonstrated here. The cargo elevators are massive, way bigger than I thought. Uh, Salty Mike pointed out that on the sign in the back there, it shows that you can fit like 960 SCU on the platforms huge they can carry up tons of boxes all of your inventory uh, can come up here at once if you need it and it can load vehicles on the cargo elevator which you can then just drive onto your ship and go on your mission this is going to be a massive quality of life upgrade and especially having persistent hangars where you can just have all your gear lying around ready to go on a mission as needed is going to be awesome i cannot wait for this tech to get into the game now, of course, there was a ship panel. This was, in my opinion, one of the more underwhelming panels, but it was explained that there was a exodus of shipbuilding talent from the company that went to another company, and that really slowed things down, like the progress on the Banu Merchantmen, or rather brought it to a complete halt. However, they did go on a hiring spree and now their shipbuilding team is bigger than ever before and they're training them up to do everything that the previous team could do. Uh, they did announce the new Zeus Mark II as a concept ship sail and it's a competent looking three person ship from RSI. It offers an exploration version, combat and interdiction version, and transport version. Currently it's in white box and on concept sail, but I may have to melt one of my ships down and pick one of these up. The Cutter Scout was also introduced with a very limited example of scanning gameplay. It does look cool, but they really didn't get too far into the details of scanning, so I would imagine that feature's a bit further out. They gave us a little silhouette tease of the next five ships that are coming in 2024 as flight ready. That would be the X-1 kind of hover bike thing, the G-12 vehicle, the Zeus, which I just mentioned, the Santok Yai alien fighter, and then something that looks kind of like a bigger fury or something, some unannounced ship. Now, many fans who have been following the project for a while say that this is one of the best, if not the best, Citizen Cons in a long time. The amount of information shown was insane. The amount of progress shown was insane. The fact that Squadron 42 is just about ready, they're in the polish phase, is so encouraging, so exciting for fans of the project that have always been so far away from seeing any sort of completed finalized project. Uh, a big takeaway from this was that because Squadron 42 is in the polished phase, it means that a lot of features should be coming over to the Persistent Universe in the very near future. Hopefully that is the case. Now obviously the big caveat here is that this was just a showcase of many things. We don't technically have any of it in the game yet. However, Pyro is coming at the end of the month, so it's literally days away at this point. So that will be when some players at least start to get that new content and start testing what's being shown off at the show. It's all very exciting. I'm still kind of swimming in the information, trying to digest it all. But uh, I don't think I've ever been more hyped for Star Citizen than I am right now. 
Did you guys watch the show? Were there any other things that maybe I glossed over that really resonated with you? Let me know in the comments what you thought about all of this. It's super impressive tech, especially the server meshing stuff is like for all gamers out there. I think we're going to see that much more widespread in the future. Uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed this video and check out the live streams that I have linked in the video description if you want truly all the details that were shown at the panel. As always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap signing off.